Ferrets can get into just about everything. They're incredibly intelligent and determined creatures. Grab a notepad and get comfortable because we are about to dive deep into ferret proofing your house. Hey guys, it's Haley from The Modern Ferret, and today we're gonna talk all about ferret proofing. We're gonna teach you everything we've learned in the last five years with ferrets. We're also gonna teach you our best tips and tricks for ferret proofing, and we'll go over some of the mistakes that we made early on so that you guys don't make the same ones. Ferret proofing is just like baby proofing or when a new parent brings a baby home for the first time. Picture covering electrical sockets and putting on child safety locks on the toilet and cabinets and that kind of stuff. The only difference with ferret proofing is human babies can't fit into spaces this big and they usually don't crawl into box springs. If you want your ferret to live a long, happy, healthy, injury-free life, it is important that you learn how to ferret proof everything. In order to ferret-proof your house, you need to first learn how to think like a ferret. It'll help you get better at predicting your ferret's behavior and ultimately preventing any trouble that they might get into. Number one, think about something as simple as your height difference. I'm around five feet tall, Moose is around five inches tall. So just think about the difference of what I see versus what Moose sees at his level. It helps to get down low and see the world from how your ferret sees it. Number two, you need to understand that ferrets love to problem solve and they're actually really good at it. According to Ferret USA Magazine, ferrets actually rank higher than dogs and cats when it comes to problem solving and are somewhere around small primates. This means it's not enough to just block off an obstacle. You should actually try to remove the temptation altogether. Number three, ferrets love to steal just about everything from your wallet, your keys, tampons, TV remotes, your heart. They will stash these items pretty much everywhere in the house and even in places that you can't find them. What items in your house can you not afford to lose? Also, what items do you have lying around that may be dangerous to your ferret? Think rubber, silicone, foam, candy, all kinds of stuff. Number four, ferrets are basically liquid, so they can fit into the smallest gaps and holes ever, which will make you seriously question the basic laws of physics. Number five, ferrets love tunnels because it taps into their natural instincts. Think if there's anything, any tight spaces around your house that your ferret might commandeer as their own private tunnel system. Number six, ferrets love to sleep in dark, quiet places. So think if you have any like nooks or crannies around your house that your ferret's gonna wanna sneak into and take a long, quiet nap. Now that you understand a little bit better about what makes your ferret tick and ultimately why they get into trouble, Let's move on to how to prevent it altogether. Let's take a look at all the danger that awaits in the kitchen. Specifically, we're gonna talk about refrigerators, under the kitchen sink, ovens, dishwashers, and trash. I highly recommend that you actually block off your kitchen entirely. There's a lot of dangerous stuff in there and it would be easier if they didn't have access at all. If you're looking for a quick barrier solution to block off your kitchen, I'll make sure to link in the description below for what we use. First off, I wanna point out something in your kitchen under the cabinets called toe kicks. You may have not realized, but underneath your cabinets, there's oftentimes holes that contractors will leave. Ferrets find these holes, crawl up into them, fall asleep, or get stuck. And the hard part is, these holes in the bottom of the cabinet, they don't lead to cabinets that you can open. They lead to like that between part that you don't have access to. We actually had this happen to us with Newt. So a couple years back, Newt crawled into one of the kitchen cabinets at our grandparents' house and he fell asleep in there. There was nothing we could do to get him out. We tried treats, we tried calling him, we tried everything. And eventually we just had to wait it out. He didn't come out until like three o'clock in the morning. It took forever. So the best thing you can do is locate these holes under the cabinet and patch them as best you can. It's a relatively easy fix. If you have super glue on hand and a spare piece of wood, you can just patch it right up. If your ferret's not deaf, you can actually use a squeaky toy noise to entice your ferret out if they do end up inside that toe kick. 
I'll make sure to link to the one that we use that's actually worked several times on Moose to get him to come out of a place where we can't access him. Next, take a look at your lower kitchen cabinets. Your ferret can and will get inside of them. Do you keep any dangerous items in there like candy or chips? Make sure to relocate all those items to a higher place in your kitchen. Here's a quick list from ferret.org that shows a few toxic items for your ferret. How about your drawers? Do you have a knife drawer? We actually had to relocate our whole utensil drawer because our ferret moose kept crawling up inside and falling asleep. A lot of people keep dangerous items underneath their kitchen sink, like rubber gloves, toxic chemicals, sponges. All of these items actually pose a potential danger to your ferret. They may ingest something toxic or they swallow something that gives them something called an intestinal obstruction. You'll want to relocate all of these items to a higher place in your kitchen or you can install tight fit child locks. Keep in mind, not all baby locks are gonna work to prevent your ferrets from getting into a cabinet, especially those hook ones that kind of have that gap. Ferrets can squeeze right in. Instead, we recommend the kind that uses magnets, and I'll make sure to link below to the one that we use. Let's take a look at your fridge, but first, let's get down on your ferrets level. First off, ew, it's really dirty down there. But let's see that little gap. Your fridge can be dangerous for a couple of reasons. Number one, your ferret can crawl underneath and it's difficult to retrieve them back out. Say they get under there and you need to get to them because they stole something dangerous for them to have, like a piece of rubber or foam. You might not be able to get to them under the fridge and then they can start eating something, ingest it, and again, possibly get an intestinal obstruction. The second reason it can be dangerous is if your ferret crawls into the back of the fridge a lot of times fridges will have exposed like mechanical parts like fans and different kinds of things like that. And that's very dangerous for your ferret to have access to. A possible solution to this is unscrewing the feet on your fridge as you can screw them down a little bit so that gap gets a little bit shorter. Also, try your best to push that fridge right up against the cabinet so your ferret can't get behind the side of it. Or if you can, wedge something in there to block off that space. Basically, you want to eliminate all paths for your ferret to get under the fridge or behind it. Oftentimes, your oven has a little gap underneath it. What we'd recommend is going under there and seeing if there's little feet that you can actually screw in to lower and shrink that gap. If you want to be extra safe, the best thing you can do is a ferret roll call before you ever turn on your oven. That way you can be 100% certain your ferret is nowhere near this potential danger. In our last apartment, we had a dishwasher and our ferrets would love to sniff and investigate every time we opened it. They'd even hop up on the door and crawl inside. And if I wasn't paying attention, they'd crawl all the way to the back. Sadly, we've heard of a few ferrets actually losing their lives when they crawl to the back of a dishwasher and their owner closes it and turns it on without noticing. The best advice, just like with a lot of other things, is do a ferret roll call before you run your dishwasher. And better yet, you can even put all your ferrets inside their cage temporarily while you run a load. Never leave your trash bags unattended. To us, trash is nasty and dirty, but to your ferret, it's an exciting wonderland full of new smells, and if they're lucky, some new exotic foods. Your ferret could eat something that they shouldn't. We've also heard cases of ferrets actually crawling into a trash bag and falling asleep, and the owner almost throws away their ferret. Also make sure your trash can lid isn't accessible to a highly motivated ferret. You'd be surprised what lengths they can go to when they wanna get somewhere. Again, a good rule of thumb would be to locate all of your ferrets before you take out your trash. There's a lot of potential dangers lurking in your bathroom for your ferret. You got chemicals and multiple drowning hazards. But sometimes your bathroom can be a temporary and small space to keep your ferret. So it's a good idea to ferret proof it beforehand. 
If your ferret is anything like ours, most likely they're going to enjoy chewing on the plunger that you keep next to your toilet, as well as that scrubber brush, which is both disgusting and dangerous. Lock these items away or place them up much higher so that your ferret can't access them. Next, take a look at your toilet. Do you usually leave the lid open? If so, your ferret might get curious and try to climb inside. Ferrets are a lot smaller than cats, so even though your ferret may be able to climb inside the toilet, that doesn't mean that they can easily jump back out. And sometimes this can actually lead to drowning. As a precaution, make a point to start always closing your toilet lid. Also, if you have a particularly persistent ferret, you can even buy one of those child locks for toilets. Just like with a toilet, a full bathtub can pose a serious drowning risk for your ferret. If you've ever placed ferrets inside your bathtub, you'll notice that they have a really tough time getting out on their own. Now picture a curious ferret jumping into a bathtub only to realize it's full of water and they can't get out. Your best bet is to never leave a full bathtub unattended. Or if you do, make sure that your ferret is safely put away in their cage. We have a pedestal sink, but many people have sinks with cabinets, and oftentimes you'll keep cleaning supplies in there as well as personal hygiene products. Our recommendation is either install a really good child lock on your bathroom cabinets, or make sure to relocate all of those cleaning supplies and personal hygiene items to a higher place so that your ferret can't have any access to them. Also, take a look under your bathroom sink cabinets and make sure there's no holes in the toe kick, just like in the kitchen, that your ferret could crawl up into and get stuck. Another danger to your ferret is bath mats. A lot of times bath mats have like non-stick padding on the bottom and it'll be made out of silicone or rubber. And if your ferret chews on that long enough, a piece could come loose, they could swallow it, and it could actually cause an intestinal obstruction. We recommend removing all rubber-backed mats in your house and instead replacing them with all fabric ones. Do you have any more tips that you would recommend? Make sure to leave a comment below to help out other ferret owners. That's the end of part one of our ferret proofing series. Be sure to check out part two in the description below where we dive deep into how to ferret proof your living room and bedrooms, as well as how to minimize your ferret's chances of escape. I'll see you in the next video.